How's it going friends? Reckless Yuki here. And in this video, what we're gonna do is take a GTX 980 Ti classified and place a NZXT Kraken G10 cooler on it with the help of a Corsair H90, which is a 144 millimeter uh, all-in-one cooler. So this is basically the finished product and I was requested to make this video since I did my last video where I showed you all the new, uh, basically upgrades that I have planned for my PC is trying to get me to the next level of 4K gaming that's currently available. So I'll be upgrading from my three GTX 980s to two of these 980 Ti's with the water cooling. So hopefully I'll be able to overclock these more yet keep it cooler. And that's the main thing I'm really worried about my PC is the heat factor since I'm living out here in the desert of Arizona. So anyways, what we're gonna do is do that. Now, in the description below, I'm gonna link a video of the video that I watched to kind of inspire me to do this because when you do this video with one of these graphics cards, basically I have another one right here. Uh, with these graphics cards, they have a backplate and a VRM memory chip heat spreader, and I wanna keep those. So in order to do that, you can't follow the instructions of the G10 like to a T. So I was kind of looking around YouTube and I found a guy who I guess did a multiple videos with the G10 installing them on different graphics cards. And one of the things he did was so exactly what I was looking for is would it fit onto a card with a backplate and a heat spreader. And he showed that it did, but there's some things in his videos that I didn't like. After I watched his video, I ordered all the stuff that he ordered. And one of the things I really didn't like is the screws that he ordered to mount the cooler onto the chip for the GPU. And the main reason I didn't like it is because these, these screws are nylon, which I'm sure are plenty strong for this task. But I mean, these are just like little nylon screws, basically plastic, and they could bend like crazy. And I'm only assuming that if you use these with metal fasteners, they're going to strip under weight. So if you're not too careful, you could strip these out really easy and then that would basically cause the uh, pump to separate from the uh, chip of the GPU and that's just gonna lead to a very bad day. So I decided not to go with those, but there are some things in this videos that I am using, basically just these little nylon, uh, I guess called finishing washers, and I had a really good use for these. But anyway, so this video is geared for anyone out there who has a like a graphics card with a backplate and a heat spreader. And if you still wanna use the Knight or use the G10, you can. And I'm gonna be using most of, basically all the hardware that came with the G10. So that is something I'm gonna do different in this video. But anyways, without too much more blabbering, we're just gonna get into like basically turn the camera and focus on the table and I'll go over exactly how I'm gonna do it, all right? So, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy and let me know what you think in the description below. All right, first thing we're gonna do is prep the G10. So this is the G10 bracket and we're gonna place the fan on it and make sure when you're placing the fan on it that the logo is going to be facing in here because basically you want the air to push this way through here like this. So that's basically what we need to do. All right, next thing we're gonna do is prep this back plate for the uh, G10. And the first thing you wanna do is take off this little pad here because this pad is what you would use if you were not using a back plate, but because we have a back plate and a VRM heat spreader, uh, this is just gonna add uh, too much where the screws aren't gonna be able to go all the way through and securely fit everything. So I like to just take this thing off. Just like that, comes off pretty easy, just a little foam patty. So along with the back plate, you see this like triangular oblong hole with the A, B, and C labeled. What we're gonna do is fit these screws into the C slot and these screws are designed in a way so when you put them all the way in, uh, it basically kind of fits into that little slot and that also kind of secures it as you use these supplied screws to screw it down. But since we're using this with the back plate of the GTX 980 Ti, we can't just go like this and place it on the back because the threaded portion here, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but basically there's a threaded portion right here where it kind of sticks out a bit too much. So if we try to put this onto the back plate of how it is, this is going to not sit properly. So I'm gonna have to raise this up a bit. And the way to do that is for me, what I found is to use these little nylon finishing washers that will be linked in the description below. And we're gonna use these to kind of separate the screws from this uh, NZXT back plate. And also it'll do a nice job of covering the other like three side or the other two sides of this hole. So it looks a little bit more finished, a little bit more professional. 
So, I mean, you could have your own opinions on it, but that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I found is the best solution for me. So we're just going to take the uh, concave side and push the screw through the concave side. And then it just adds like a nice little finishing piece for the uh, other end of the supplied screw. And then we're gonna place it through here and then line it up with the C and then just take a nut and screw it down and then wrench it tight. Now, as we can see, that's the finished product where it basically looks like that and it's screwed all the way down so it's nice and tight and it looks pretty good if I don't say so myself. If I say so myself. All right, and then the final step is just to take these little plastic washers and just place them on the end here and then we're just gonna set this aside and get to the next step. All right, the next part of this is to take off the ACX 2.0 cooler from the card itself, and this is pretty easy. All we have to do is just remove these four screws. Now, if you have a different graphic card, you might have to remove additional screws, but for this specific card, all we have to do is remove these four. Okay, and now that we have the screws removed, when we remove this, we wanna do it very carefully because there are two connectors that we need to dis, uh, or disconnect from the motherboard or from the uh, PCB itself. So slowly just pry it apart and it should start coming off. And then right here at the end, we have the first one, which I'm just going to pry off. And I believe that's for the LED lights. And then at the bottom here, we have the one for the fans. All right, so pretty simple. This is the ACX 2.0 cooler in all its glory. And this whole big thing here is just to cool this chip alone. And then we have the heat spreader here to cool all the memory chips and the VRM chips. So um, this is why this video is a little bit different because instead of just installing it onto a PCB itself, it has like all this extra space it also needs to install on top of. And then along with this piece or along with this heat spreader, these little points here, these secure points, will actually get in the way of the all-in-one cooler. So we're going to have to install a copper shim on top of this in order to give it the space needed to have contact from the chip and the cooler. So that is something that we're going to do. But first let's get, and we're going to clean this off so that we could store it. And then we're gonna clean this off and clean off the other parts needed in order to uh, assemble everything. If you're curious about my cleaning solution, all I'm using is some 91% isopropyl alcohol and, or isopropyl alcohol. And then you wanna make sure that you have over 90 when you use this, don't use 70. For reasons I don't know, it's just what I read somewhere on a forum. So that's what I'm gonna go with because I assume that those people are smarter than me when it comes to PC assembly and repair. All right, so this are the bag of copper shims that I bought for this. And if you're curious about the specs of this copper shim, it is 25 by 25 by one millimeter thick. So this is just perfect for getting basically the whole chip. I saw in the other video that the guy used a 20 by 20 by one millimeter thick, and it was just too small where it didn't cover the whole plate. So I was kind of fearful of not being able to take as much heat from the chip to the cooler as possible. So I made sure to get a 25 by 25. And if you're curious about where I got this, I bought it from eBay from somewhere in Hong Kong. So this is where I got it. And I wasn't able to find one of these on Amazon. So I can't leave a link to it in the description below. But if you just do some Google searching, you'll be able to find them. But one thing that I will recommend instead of going one millimeter thick, possibly go 1.2 millimeters thick just to kind of give yourself a little bit of leeway because you, the whole point of this is to kind of raise the contact of from the chip to basically where the cooler will go. And if you don't have one thick enough, the cooler will just rest right on these little tabs here. And if this isn't thick enough, then it's not gonna make full contact and you're not gonna get much cooling. But I'm going to see how well this does. And obviously I'll show you guys what type of temps I'm running, but just to be a little bit safer, possibly go with a 1.2 millimeter, but this is a one millimeter, but it should be fine. But that's just my suggestion if I was to do this again in the future. So anyways, we're just gonna clean this off and prep this as well. 
Now, the next thing we have to prep is the cooler itself. So this is the Corsair H90, which is a decently old model, but I've always had success with these. This is what's cooling Lily Koi's Hackintosh, her 3770K uh, i7 processor, and it has been working just fine for the past two to three years. So I decided I would go with this because, uh, well, for one, it was just a good performer and also has a 140 millimeter rad a ra a radiator. So that's what I'm gonna be using to ensure that this chip stays cool. And uh, basically what we have to do is just take off this cap and we're gonna clean off all this thermal compound because I wanna apply my own. All right, now as a final measure of cleaning, I'm gonna go over all these three surfaces again, but this time using a coffee filter because supposedly using a coffee filter will not leave any sort of fibrous residue that would come from paper towels. And this is a tip I got from the other video showing you how to install this. So definitely props to that dude for giving some useful advice. It's just the way I go about things was different than his. So that's why I decided to make my own video. All right, now what we're gonna do is apply the thermal compound. And the thermal compound I like using is some Arctic MX4. Uh, you could choose whichever one you like, but this is one I'll be using. And first we're going to place a nice little amount right on the chip itself. All right, now very carefully, we're gonna take the copper shim and just grab the edges here. And we're going to just place this right on top of the chip. All right, and with the help of just something, some sort of tool, like I'm gonna use this small wrench, I'm going to basically apply this down to kind of make sure that it's seated properly and level and to make sure that the grease is kind of spread out. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's this copper shim right here that's gonna go between the chip and the actual cooler. And my fear is if I just leave it like this, place the other thermal compound here and then press down on it, if this thermal or if this uh, copper shim is like kind of cocked anyway, it could possibly sh like push the compound on the bottom one way and then on the top the other way so it won't actually get a good like spread. So I basically am using this and very carefully pressing down on it and then making sure that there's not gonna be uh, any sort of thermal compound going out of one side or the other because that would kind of give me an indication that it didn't seat properly. So just basically make sure you line this up correctly just by nudging on the sides to make sure that it's absolutely where you want it. All right, that looks good. And now we're just gonna press down on it a little bit evenly just to make sure it kind of seats a little bit. All right, that looks good. Now the next thing I wanna do is take this back plate that we messed with before and basically place it on the back of the card and push on through the holes. Okay, and just double check to make sure that it kind of looks good. So basically uh, when you do this, you wanna make sure like when you actually place the card in that you'll be able to see or the NZXT will be faced in the direction that you want and just place it on the back of it and just let it sit there. We're gonna need to place some thermal compound onto this copper shim here. All right, the next thing we have to do to prepare this bracket is to ensure we place these little rubber or these little foam pieces onto here so that when we place it here, it kind of gives it some support. And so it's not weighted down by this fan so that when we actually apply the cooler on it, it's gonna be more likely to stay where it needs to be instead of getting cocked. All right, now that everything is prepped, the next part we wanna do is make sure that we get these little thumb screws here and uh, have them out and ready so that we don't have to be digging through the bag trying to find these when we're trying to hold the bracket and the CPU cooler in place. And so just kinda place them on the side here so you could easily grab them and make sure that they're in the orientation uh, that will be easy to grab because like basically it almost looks identical if you're just going by it fast where the kinda the part where you put the screwdriver almost looks like the part where you actually put the screw in. So make sure that the little rubber washers on these are facing down, it makes it a little bit easier. And now we're on to the final part where I really don't like doing this because it's kind of a, a big pain in the dick. Like that's, that's the only way I could really describe it. And I don't like doing this. I didn't like doing this the first time and I don't like doing it now. Um, but basically we have to kind of figure out our orientation for the pump, which I'm going to kind of place like 
Uh, so I basically put it in there so that these hoses are going to the top and also possibly move these a bit. All right, so I moved the hoses a bit and then just placing this, doing this final part is just gonna be, like I said, a pain. So you wanna make sure, like I'm not, I'm not touching the copper plate, I'm just like kind of holding the sides of the plastic in case you're wondering, like I don't have my fingers actually on the plate on the bottom here. I'm just holding the sides as I try to kind of situate myself to easily put this on. And so by holding this and kind of slowly going over, you wanna make sure that the holes and everything matches. And as you start pushing down, you don't wanna take it off or anything because you don't want to mess up your shim. So it's a very delicate operation here. And I apologize if my hand is in the way, but I need to make sure that I am seeing things correctly. And the thing I have to do is kind of like reach into the sides here, kind of make sure that I am pushing the little screws where they need to go. All right, now that the screws are in place and the pump seems to be good, now what we're gonna do is gonna take these screws and just start screwing them in. All right, now just start screwing these down, tighten them in the star pattern. All right, and as we can see, that is an installed GT or G10 or Kraken G10 onto a GTX 980 Ti. And that's what it'll look like. So uh, basically the only thing left is to just take some of the supplied zip ties and possibly do some cable management here just to make sure that these stay in here. But I would first make sure that you know exactly where your uh, radiator orientation is gonna be and make sure it can fit. Because if you like, if you zip tie these to, like to the bracket here, then you can't really like pull it out and fit it to where you need. So. I'll do that at the very last when you're able or when you're finally installing things. And then as far as where I plan on connecting these fans, this fan goes to uh, basically this little stock fan here. And then this goes to the actual cooler. And I plan on using a Molex adapter to plug these fans into because I'm just gonna have these running at full speed all the time. Uh, this fan here isn't gonna get loud enough to make any noise, at least I'm assuming it's not going to, at least from what I read on all the forums. And all this is doing is making sure that air is being pushed down onto this heat spreader. So it doesn't need to be the best fan in the world. You don't need a Noctua. But if you want something else, like if let's say you're going with an all black theme, you don't want this like kind of ugly white fan, then definitely don't have this fan here. Just get like some sort of uh, whatever type of 92 millimeter uh, fan you'd like to choose yourself. But for me, since my build is kind of like this black and white theme, this kind of fits perfectly. And uh, then the only thing left to do is just install this and then install the actual fan onto the radiator to make sure it gets some ample cooling. So anyways, that's it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and hopefully, uh, I mean everything, I'm pretty sure everything's gonna work well and I'll definitely let you guys know in a future video how well these are able to run. I'll probably include it or talk about it when I do my comparison of three GTX 980s to two GTX 980 Ti's. So definitely look forward to that. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed once again and let me know what you think in the description below and I'll talk to you guys again in the next video, all right? Thank you for watching, bye-bye.